Hi, I'm Jeff Beard from the Embedded Vision Alliance. I'm here today at the Game Developer Conference in the suite of Soft Kinetic, an Embedded Vision Alliance member company. I'm here with Eric Kreslow, Chief Marketing Officer of Soft Kinetic. Hi, Eric. Hey, Jeff. How are you doing? Great. Thanks a lot for having me. Pleasure. So, Soft Kinetic is a supplier of 3D vision sensors and software for gesture recognition and related functionality. Uh, here at the Game Developer Conference, this is a very hot topic. As many people know, uh, gaming is a very hot application space for vision, especially for 3D vision these days. That's correct. So we, indeed, we are doing uh, both uh, 3D cameras and, and, uh, and software. And indeed, here at GDC, we are focused more on the game experience. Excellent. So you're going to show us some demos and uh, show us what you can do with 3D vision in gaming? My pleasure. Yeah. Great. What we have here is a... Uh, uh, a demonstration of our long-range full-body tracking uh, library on multiple platforms. We have uh, uh, here um, an Android device um, powered by an NVIDIA uh, Tegra 4 uh, chipset. We have uh, here the PlayStation 4 um, running our, our library. We also have a PC uh, running Windows. So. Um, for you know, game developers and application developers, that's interesting to know that by using um, our library, uh, they can they can deploy on multiple platform uh, without having to uh, recode with a new API. And the library in this case is something that tra takes the uh, image sensor data, the depth data, and turns into a uh, a skeleton that's model right. showing yes. where the player's bodies Absolutely. are and how they're yes. oriented and moving. Yes. So yeah, in, in that, that's correct. The, the library needs what we call a depth map, which can come from uh, multiple sources, can come from a stereoscopic camera, like on the PlayStation 4, can come from a, a, a time of flight camera like ours, or uh, like uh, Microsoft Kinect, um, can come from a structured light camera, like uh, PrimeSense was, was uh, used to, uh, to do. Um, so our library just need that and then transform it to a, a full body tracking uh, experience. Great. So uh, I'll start with the uh, here uh, the PlayStation 4. Um, so this is uh, the, the visualization tool um, for uh, full body tracking. So I just need to, to be uh, in front of the camera. Um, and uh, there is no calibration anymore, no background learning, it's uh, full, uh, fully automatic. Obviously that's uh, something uh, needed for a good user experience. Um, so the library provides uh, up to four uh, skeleton uh, simultaneously but also a user mask um, to be able to do a background removal for augmented reality experiences uh, and uh, more precise scene analysis giving you ideas for the different objects that you have in the scene. So if I step into the field of view now, it can track my, sure. yeah. my body simultaneously You're welcome. with yours? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. And you said long range. Yeah. Uh, what does long range mean? In this uh, long range is a, what, we, what we call long range is a typically 10 foot experience uh, the, the living room experience. Uh, sitting on the couch or sitting standing. Sitting on the show and, and uh, standing up uh, in a typical living room size. Yeah. Uh, that's what we call the long range. Got it. Now, many people are familiar with the Microsoft Connect, uh, the first sort of mainstream, very Absolutely. popular yeah. depth camera for right. gaming. Yeah. But this is a different approach. So can you explain how, how does this differ from the Microsoft Kinect right. approach? So you know the, the initial, the, the first Kinect was based on a structural light technology from, uh, from PrimeSense. Uh, that was for the Xbox 360, right? And now they moved to uh, uh, a time of flight uh, technology. So the first one, the PrimeSense one, was very different from us. It was about you know, projecting a, a grid on the scene and um, computing the distance based on the deformation of that grid or a pattern where time of flight is about um, just sending diffused infrared light in the scene and measuring the time that the that light takes to bounce on the object and return to the sensor. So um, that's what we are developing at Sotkini, time of flight sensors. Uh, and that's what Microsoft also uh, chose for their second iteration of the Kinect. Now, this PlayStation demo, though, uses a different uh, different technology, yeah. right? So, indeed, that's uh, yet another one. Uh, it's a stereoscopic camera. So, it's, let, let's say, a more basic technology in the sense that it's just um, two RGB sensors looking at the, the same uh, the same objects. And uh, 
based on that you can you can find that map. So um, there are some uh, pros and cons to that technology. Uh, first pro is that uh, it's less expensive than uh, time of flight or shuttle light. Um, it has naturally high resolution RGB streams because it's based on high resolution RGB sensors. Um, the field of view of that camera is very very impressive. It's very wide, so you can be very close to the screen, or you can have a lot of people in front of the screen with a lot of space to, to move around. Uh, but it also has drawbacks. So uh, it's a passive um, camera, so it means that it relies on the ambient light. So that means that that means that you need a minimum uh, level of ambient light to to have it working properly. Um, it's more sensitive to um, the, the type of objects that uh, are in front of the camera, you know, you need uh, patterns on, on the user. You need uh, you, it's more difficult if you have a uniform background, etc., etc. So, but that can be compensated with a more advanced uh, algorithms for you know, improving the quality of the data. Very interesting. So, so stereoscopic is one technique for getting 3D image yeah. data, but that requires uh, good ambient light. But time of flight is another, and structured light is, is yet a third, and I guess we're seeing all three being used in the, the gaming space. Yeah, indeed. I mean, the, the three technologies, again, have pros and cons. So really depending on the, you know, the, the platform, uh, the market, uh, the price point, the performance you know, reach, it's, uh, it's a good choice between the, the, those three. Obviously, at Soft Kennedy, we believe that ultimately time of flight uh, will be uh, the only solutions because um, that technology can really uh, improve a lot in terms of performance, in terms of price, in terms of uh, power consumption, uh, and ultimately it will replace all the others. And um, when you say performance, what do you what metrics are you thinking about in terms of better performance? Yeah, so the, the performance indeed is a broad term uh, covering uh, uh, specifications like uh, power consumptions. Uh, price that's more on the product definition, but also pure uh, precision performances and like you know, uh, spatial resolution, uh, the quality of the signal, uh, the lateral resolution, etc. Uh, etc. Et I know for gaming, latency is a big concern. Yeah. Uh, how long from the time you actually move your arm or whatever yeah. to when the avatar in the game yeah. responds? Uh, uh, can you comment on that? Right. Yeah. So latency indeed is uh, one of the uh, the major uh, specification that uh, we need to um, to focus on uh, for uh, gaming, but also for other uh, gesture-based uh, experiences, like just you know UI navigation on a PC. Um, and so for that, uh, time of flight is very interesting because um, you know you don't need any compute. Uh, extensive computation to get the, the depth map. It comes more or less naturally from the sensor. It's very close to the physics of light, right? Uh, compared to um, uh, structural light or stereoscopic vision, which require very intensive uh, algorithms to just get the distance information. So uh, again, time of flight is a very uh, promising future in terms of latency. Uh, no, uh, as, uh, as you, you know, latency comes from multiple sources, it's not only the sensor, it's also you know, the, uh, the connection to the host, uh, the performance of the host, and the performance of the display, uh, etc. Et and the software. And, and uh, obviously then the, uh, the tracking software that you are, you are using uh, also implies uh, add to the latency. Makes sense. So, so the, the soft kinetic uh, software middleware is taking the, the depth image. Is it only taking the depth image or is it also getting a, uh, a regular conventional 2D uh, image as well? Yeah, so I would say uh, most of the processing are based on the, the depth uh, image uh, and uh, to compensate some uh, flaws or, or uh, mistakes or difficulties we can then uh, add to that um, RGB tracking uh, if needed. Uh, you know, for instance, for a stereoscopic camera, it makes sense for us to uh, to uh, add those uh, processing or algorithms on, on, on the RGB stream. Uh, when it's pure time of flight or structural light, it's less needed. Uh, but again, it depends on the platform, depends on the, the price point, depends on the experience. But indeed, we are 
uh, combining uh, both. Okay, so so the Softmax software is taking the, the depth data from time of flight sensor or potentially another sensor like the stereo pair and also possibly to the image data. Yes. And from that it's generating the skeleton. And the skeleton right. is what the game developer, in the case of yes. games, that would be the input to the game. Uh, absolutely, yes. So you can compare that to uh, an input from uh, a joypad or a mouse or a keyboard. Those are you know, control inputs that you can use directly in your application. And uh, in that particular case, it's a skeleton structure, so it's made for uh, animating a character in a game or controlling a UI. Or yeah, so now uh, we are going to uh, look at uh, the same experience for body tracking, but on uh, another platform, uh, the um, NVIDIA Shield uh, running uh, Android. Uh, we've plugged our uh, Time of Flight DepthSense 311 camera, which is a long range camera. Uh, and you'll see uh, we have uh, the same uh, API, the same algorithm to, uh, to track uh, full body tracking uh, skeleton. So again, it's uh, the same experience uh, uh, on, the, on the mobile platform. So we obviously optimize a lot our, uh, our software to run on, on those uh, uh, smaller platforms. But um, those chipsets are quite impressive in terms of uh, performance as well. So we were really able to have uh, that high quality uh, full body tracking experience on, uh, on those uh, Android devices uh, as well. So a very interesting evolution of the, the video game experience is uh, virtual reality. Um, you know, with the, the success of the, the Oculus, uh, the recent announcement of Sony uh, to release also a VR headset, uh, we really believe that um, that, uh, that kind of experience will uh, become a great success and what we want to do with that is to add uh, a layer of immersion and interaction to the VR experiences by uh, adding um, a depth sensing uh, camera either on directly on the, the headset or uh, facing the user, that really doesn't matter, uh, but by doing so we can uh, add um, the possibility to interact directly uh, in the, uh, the 3D space with your hands and, and your fingers or your full body uh, physically. So um, you see here a very simple uh, user experience uh, 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 demonstration where you can navigate through, uh, through menus but uh, with uh, uh, our technology you can really interact physically uh, with, uh, with your hands. I'm going to, to put uh, the helmet on and show you how it works. So you can uh, explore the menu and once you put your hand uh, in front of you they, uh, they appear in uh, the virtual environment. So I can uh, go through uh, the menu here. Uh, I can um, activate uh, one of the, the, the widgets. Let's say uh, this one here. here. So very simple uh, interaction um, uh, in the virtual space, but that really adds a lot to, um, to, uh, to the experience. So you're bringing one element of the physical world, which is your hand, into the virtual space by having the 3D sensor mounted on top of the, uh, yeah. the virtual goggles. Correct, yes. We are bringing a reference into the virtual world, which is really useful for the user to understand what, what is it what he is doing in the virtual world, but it's also a, a way to really interact with uh, the object in the virtual space. Um, so um, that, that fully makes sense to combine those, uh, those two technologies. So what we have here is um, our Depsense 325 uh, short range camera hooked to uh, an NVIDIA tablet on Android uh, and on the tablet we are uh, running our um, close interaction uh, library to do hands finger and head tracking. Um, so what you can see here is uh, the depth map, so the raw information coming from uh, out of the, the sensor together with uh, the RGB stream. Uh, and so on top of that we, we start then tracking hands, uh, head and finger. As you can see uh, we have uh, the the, the, the hand volume, we have the fingertip tracking, 
with the palm orientation, uh, we also have the, the hand openness uh, to be able you know, to grab an object, uh, uh, drag it, and, and, and release it. Um, so, what you can do with that, um, you can do very simple things like uh, you know, just uh, drawing uh, in space, and you can see uh, the very fine uh, precision of the, of, the, of the tracking and uh, the responsiveness. Uh, you can also uh, do uh, uh, more advanced experience like our supersonic stuntman game uh, where you have to um, throw a, a stuntman in the air and, uh, and uh, crush it. So this is our um, a stuntman game which is a, it's a more advanced experience based on gesture recognition on, on, on a tablet. Um, so I can here uh, select uh, one of the, uh, the game mode, uh, select uh, one player, and then I get into the game. And uh, here I'm aiming with the, the cannon, I release the stuntman, and then I can fly through the environment, pick up the stars and uh, the bonuses uh, by using uh, the orientation of my hand. All that, of course, running on the, the portable on the Android tablet. So, is the sensor there just a sensor, or is there some pre-processing uh, happening in the in the sensor box there? No, the, there is a very minimalistic uh, processing happening in the camera. It's a, a really internal sensor processing, uh, but you know all the rest, uh, the the depth map uh, generation, the filters. Uh, and the, the tracking are uh, on, the, on the tablet. So now we have uh, really um, our um, evolution of the, the depth uh, sensing camera, which is an embedded module here, uh, which is uh, small enough and um, uh, with the, the right performance to be directly embedded, for instance, in um, the bezel of a screen or in a tablet or a, a smartphone. So as you can see on the screen, um, the performance are really similar to uh, our uh, previous generation camera, uh, and uh, we are um, very happy to uh, to be able now to to go to uh, mobile platforms, uh, where we believe um, there is obviously uh, a great market for us, uh, but not, not only for gesture uh, interaction, also you know, for augmented reality, 3D scanning and uh, all those new applications that are coming and that needs to be on the mobile platform. So that sensor is small enough to integrate into the bezel exactly. of, uh, of a laptop or a tablet? Right, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Well, these are a really excellent uh, variety of demos, Eric. It's really great to see all of the uh, different platforms and use cases uh, for 3D vision uh, in gaming and consoles and mobile devices and right. so on. Thanks, thanks a lot for the My demos. Pleasure.